Hey, Health Fix Junkies, it's Teresa Lear Levine from Becoming More Me, the podcast for busy minded entrepreneurs that want to be more and do less. Blessed to have appeared on not just one, but three episodes of the Health Fix. So I encourage you to check out episode 445, 411, and 322 of the Health Fix podcast, where I talk about breaking up with your old self, self sabotage fears, and thriving through life's changes, <clears throat> perimenopause, using EFT tapping and hypnotherapy. You're listening to the Health Fix Podcast. Here's your amazing host, Dr. Janine Krause. Hey, Health Junkies. This episode of the Health Fix Podcast is the second podcast of a two-part interview series with cultural anthropologist, author, speaker, and health coach, Jonathan Marion. If that name sounds familiar, that's because he was on the podcast episode 456, where we talked about being present in your life. In this episode, we'll be talking about the art of relating to others and navigating rejection. Stress and the impact of cortisol on your health are crucial to evaluate. And today, we're going to explore how relating to others ties into optimizing your health. Let's introduce you or reintroduce you to Jonathan Marion. I think so. And I know, I remember the relationship I was in where I first sort of really got a handle on this. And it was a very different relationship because it wasn't one thing. Because it wasn't, you know, it's a relationship and therefore it needs to look like X because that's what I think relationships should look like. It was, wait a minute, there were some parts of this that are really different than I expected or thought they would be. Um, and some of how these things work, you know, maybe better, or worse, but those are just, you know, how I feel about them. But they're not inherently good, bad, right or wrong if it's what's in the service of this person. And if I'm prioritizing the person and not the relationship, now we can get somewhere because it's not, this is how things should be. It's wait a minute. How is this affecting them? How is this landing with them? How do I feel about this? And none of it is external to the people involved. None of it is about in the service of the relationship as if that is something other than a dynamic exchange between us. I'm like, my mind's going about relating. I'm like stuck on that because it's like, it, it's so much about relating to others. And, and I think for me, you know, and I'll bring in my personal story a little bit here. So the folks maybe get a little bit of a sense. I mean, I, since day one, I've always wanted to connect with people. And, and when I don't, I feel like I did something wrong, right? I'm not relating. Now I'm going, okay, I'm not relating. Why am I not relating comes the next question in my head. And, and what is it? How can I step back and go, what did I not relate to in that person? Or what did I not relate to in my own self in that particular conversation? So how do you, how do you coach th folks through the, the process of relating? How do, sure. how do you do that? I know it's a big, it's a whole can of yeah. worms here. Yeah. So I think the first and most important point is to recognize that it's not a one direction exchange relating. It's two directions at least. Right. Um, and so all we can do is try and build the bridge or lean in the minute we're trying to pull someone over. Now we're into that anxious attachment, right? It's, I want you to be relating with me and I'm going to try and pull you into that. Mm. That's ultimately not going to work. If it's, I'm afraid you won't relate to me. And so I'm not even going to try and relate to you. Now we're in avoidance. If we sometimes do part of one and sometimes part of the other, other now we're in that anxious avoidant or disorganized. <clears throat> when we're in secure attachment, it's, I would like to invite a relation with you and I'm going to build my part of the bridge and the foundation. And then I'm going to see, are you going to meet me there? And if so, what's the exchange? Hmm. And so I think we need to start there because you can't make people relate to you. And it, it, we talked about it last time. Again, one of the things I spend a lot of time doing 
is Brazilian zouk dancing. It's a type of partnered dance form. But I have some experience with salsa and ballroom and bachata and all of those things. But in social dancing, I want to dance with the people who want to dance with me. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in life. You, I want to relate to the people who want to relate with me. Mm -hmm. And so I may put invitations out, but I'm not going to try and get people to relate to me. I'm not going to try and get people to dance with me who don't want to. But I'm also going to be careful to not avoid the invitations because I'm afraid someone's going to say no. Mm -hmm. And so how do I coach people through this? I really use the same general framework that I introduced uh, last time with sort of strategic life goals. But again, I use the being framework because we're human beings, mm -hmm. not human doings, not human accomplishings or anything like that. And so it's begin where you are. So what's going on for me? I need to understand what is it that I'm actually, how am I showing up in this moment? If I'm feeling insecure, okay, what's that about? And if I can't even acknowledge that, you know, I'm not gonna be able to build an authentic relationship because I'm trying to fill an internal need mm -hmm. with, um, you know, an insecurity with someone else's approval or praise. And there's nothing wrong with getting acknowledgement, with being witnessed by another person. I think that's what is the most powerful part of relating to someone else is having someone be a true witness to our lives and being a witness to theirs. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of recognizing, acknowledging, celebrating who someone is and having that celebrated about you. It's not trying to find something that is unstable and asking someone to glue it together. So I need to begin with where I am, what's going on for me, and being honest and authentic about it. If I am showing up in a place where I'm not in a good mood, if I try and fake that I'm happy, you know, so say, let's go back. You said the first date, right? If I'm going on a first date with someone and I just had some really terrible news about something, you know, at work or family member, you know, if I show up and try and pretend everything's okay, I guarantee you it is not going to be a great first date. Yeah. If I call or message and say, look, this is what happened. I'd love to get together, but could we reschedule? Okay. That might work. If I show up and I say, look, I may seem distracted tonight. I just want to let you know what's going on. It has nothing to do with you, um, but this might be coming up. Okay. At least I'm being authentic. It's a starting place for actually relating. So we start there. E is, you know, explore where you want to go. What is it that we're looking for? What is it that we want? Is it to just see, you know, who is this person? Is it to see about what might be ways to work together if it's a business setting? Is it to see, is this someone who might be a romantic interest? Is it to see, you know, is this someone who may be a good, you know, local friend to go out and do an activity with? And so recognizing for ourselves, what is it that we're even looking for? Because mm -hmm. if we don't know that, then how do we ever know if it's met or not? Interesting. I mean, it's an interesting concept that you bring up, though, because I think a lot of people don't really think about what the purpose is, right? Why are we exploring this relationship? Why are we exploring this conversation? Like we just met. OK, cool. You know, it, it's interesting to think about that. OK, okay. Yeah. And again, it's not that there needs to be an end point in mind. It's just like, why are you doing it? Is it you feel like you're supposed to relate to people? Is it you enjoy just talking to people and seeing where it goes? If so, that's your answer. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But if you don't even know why you're doing it, then, you know, I don't think it's going to be very satisfying. And I think this comes then to the eye of being, right? Where we're really investigating, like, how do we move from where we are to where we want to be? And one of the things that comes up here, and I think this is probably the most important piece about relationships, is I can have an intention for myself. This is how I want to show up. This is what I want as far as myself. But the minute we have an intention for someone else, it's very problematic because we can't control who other people do. And if it's, I'm going to show up to the date and present myself in this way so that this person does blank, 
Mm -mm. Now you have an intention for them. If it's, I go into a business negotiation, I'm going to present myself in this way so that they do blank. Again, you're trying to control other people. That's never going to be authentic. It's never going to be something that's truly fulfilling. I need to differentiate. Here might be what I'm interested in, but I'm interested. Here's how I'm going to show up. Here's my intention for me. And I'm interested to see how you respond. And then maybe it'll be what I want and maybe it won't, but I'm going to actually be open to what's authentically there. Now we're actually relating. Mm -hmm. Now it's not, do you fit the mold of what I want? In which case I'm attached to what I think it should be. It's, I have that idea of a relationship and it's a should, a relationship should be like this, mm -hmm. whether it's a romantic one, a familial one, a business one. I'm actually attached in this case to a model of how I think things should be. I'm not actually relating to whoever that other party is at all. Mm -hmm. And then just to wrap out the model of being N is now start because we actually do need to engage with others. We can think about this till we're blue in the face, but it's an active living process and we need to actually start relating to people again, whatever the context, with that interest in seeing where it goes and pursue that. And the G is get your best life, get your results. And again, it doesn't mean that it's the answer you wanted or that life is perfect, but it does mean you've actually, you need to take the time and acknowledge that you've learned a new way of relating and you're in a different place now because maybe it's worked out in the way you hope for, Maybe it's unfolded something you never expected. Maybe it's disappointing, but you at least now have a new way of relating and have a much greater possibility going forward of actually finding something that's very authentic and resonant going forward. Makes sense. Makes sense. Because, yeah, I think, I think you know, kind of like we had talked about in our first podcast was so much of the shoulds we have around relationships, around, you know, whatever kind of relationship, child, mother, you know, and romantic and, and everything, what someone should be doing. But if we're not relating, then that's that's a huge problem. And and I can see now how the attachments fit in. I'm hoping folks can can see how if we are shooting on folks, we are also kind of not in resonance with with our our attachments because we're our shooting comes basically stems from maybe attachments or vice versa. I'm going to let you answer that one or both. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that the attachments come first because those are things that we develop even pre-verbally. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the shoulds we internalize, they also might start fairly young, but they get filled in and elaborated as we develop language and go forward. And so there's a very, um, you know, biological element to the attachments. There is what actually helps regulate your nervous system. And is that something where you feel that that support is available very early on? Or are you anxious that it won't be? Or do you learn that, you know, no matter how much you reach out, it won't be? And so you get less distressed to not even try. Mm -hmm. And then as we go forward we may gain these ideas of how people should meet us or how the world should be. And we may feel we're getting it or not, but those are much more sort of, even if unconscious, they're much more intellectual ideas. So I think they come later, but we then get, because so many of them are at an unconscious level, we then interpret a lot of them as whether the attachment needs are being met or not without even realizing that it's going through that lens of how we think those things should be done. But because they're unconscious, we don't even express them or recognize that we're in a pattern as opposed to just being open to what is, or that we're walling ourselves off or that we're, you know, really becoming draining when we don't mean to be. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It makes sense. I think for a lot of people, this is this is a very root stressor, 
that they may or may not be even fully conscious aware, like you said, because we're running these patterns and a lot of times we need to step out and go, okay, wait, is this a pattern I'm running? Do I keep looping this? Because obviously, you know, you've probably seen this where relationships, whether it's romantic or business, repeat themselves. And the same thing happens, just a different name and place, right? Hey, Hell Junkies, wanted to tell you about my pal, Dr. Anna Marie Frank's supplement line that specifically targets the needs of women. From anxiety to depression to getting focused and balancing those hormones, as well as helping with sleep, she's got you covered. Plus, she has teas too. This day and age, it's hard to know what supplement companies are up to when it comes to sourcing and quality. That's why I love to get to know company owners. Dr. Anna Marie has created formulas that combine what I would do if I owned a supplement and tea company. So wanted to tell you about them. As a listener of the Health Fix podcast, you can get 10% off your order by using the code D-R-J-K-R-A-U-S-E when you head to happyholeyou.com. Now, say you're driving or out on an adventure and you're not gonna remember where to find this website. That's okay. My favorite products are all on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find everything I stand behind and use myself right there. So let's get back to the podcast. So if someone's listening to this right now and they're like, I think I see this pattern. What is what is like your favorite technique to have people slow down and be like, whoa, wait a minute, there is something going on here. Is it, you know, yes, the being obviously, but is there like a, do I write this down and go, okay, this particular situation, I, I want to look through the being part of things or do, how do they isolate to, or at least start to become aware in the first place? Yeah. So I think overall if any of this is resonating for people, you know, there's some really good books that are emerging, um, you know, sort of the most updated versions of stuff on attachment. And, you know, take the time, do a little research, read through it, see what resonates for you. Um, just as to give yourself an overview and go, oh, okay, I do see this. And um, there's some really interesting work now. There's even books specifically about attachment styles um, for polyamorous relationships so oh, that wow. it's not just confined to the things that, you know, were sort of the frameworks early on. And so, you know, it's a starting point to just sort of get more familiar with how it might be showing up. And as far as the in the moment, I think the most important thing is to go, what need am I trying to get filled? Mm -hmm. And so that starts with, you know, why is this an issue to me? Why is this, you know, getting something riled up in me? Um, why is this causing friction? Why is this upsetting me? And it may or may not end up being an attachment issue per se, but I think that's the beginning of anything. So is it, uh, for example, right now I'm applying for uh, mortgages here in Portugal. And one of the uh, mortgage brokers told me to email them all of my financial information. I said, um, that's not secure. And I got back a really snippy email of, you know, our email here at the bank is very secure. It has to be according to national law. And I'm just like, I don't even know if I, I don't like you at the moment. And I don't know if I trust you. And if you think email is a secure means of trans, like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> um, and like, that's just a very human thing. And, but if I back up and it's not to say there's anything wrong with having that reaction, but it's like, okay, this is about trust, right? This is about, I do not trust your judgment. It's not, I don't trust your character. I don't trust your judgment. So now what do I do with that? Well, again, I have options at this point. It could be I look for a different mortgage broker. It could be, no, I find a secure file transfer protocol and let's hop on the phone and I'll give you the password, but I won't put it in writing. And so I can send you the secure link, but no one without this passphrase would ever be able to access it. Um, and then just say, you know, it's reasonable for me to be sort of irked at this person and feel like this is the field they're in and they don't know better. Um, 
but recognize what is it that it's actually triggering in me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, similarly, you know, if I reach out to someone and it's like, oh, I really enjoyed dancing with this person and I invite them to get together and practice and train and never hear back from them. Yeah, that hurts. But what is it? What is the actual thing that's bothersome? And okay, for me, and this is one of those places where it overlaps, my top two love languages are physical touch and quality time. Well, makes sense that I like partner dancing. Um, but so it was like, okay, I felt like I was getting these needs met with this person and I felt like we interacted well. And so it's not that it's because those are my love languages, but it was like, I thought this was a possibility to get those things, to get the quality time, the physical touch. And it turns out it wasn't mutual, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. There's a little sting to that, but okay. That's what that's about. I don't have to attach my self-worth to it. I just have to recognize what was it that I thought or was looking, what need was it that I was looking to fill or thought would be, and therefore it's disappointing when it isn't. But it's not a commentary on me. And I think that's where we attach, you know, our self-worth to these things all too often. And then it, you know, feels like an attack or, you know, Sometimes it's either an attack on self or a feeling of unworthiness. And again, they're related to self-worth and that's where, you know, it gets really challenging. Mm -hmm. It can, because I mean, I think rejection is a big one for a lot of folks. I mean, I, I know myself, I, I sometimes didn't want to send out, you know, some of my proposals for writing for different magazines, right? For example, or things of that nature, because you're like, okay, how many of these are actually going to go through? How many of these are actually going to get accepted? And then how am I going to handle like rejection? It's so crazy how we think these things. And then we're like all, I would say, twisted up about it. Yeah. And so that's an avoidant pattern, right? Like we're avoiding sending it out because of the rejection. And again, it's totally human. And we all do some of these at different points. But the question becomes, and if I'm working with someone in a, you know, coaching them, or if I'm consulting, it's, is it just a rejection or is it information? There's this whole issue that there's often this sort of, we feel like it's an attack on self-worth, right? Mm -hmm. And so if instead of that, we can step back far enough to really look at what is the need that I am looking to have filled here. And I want to be really clear, this isn't about being needy. We're humans. We all have needs. There right. are, you know, physical survival needs, but we all have emotional needs and security needs and um, interpersonal needs. Like it's part of the evolved organisms. And so it's not about being needy and there's nothing wrong with having needs. We all have them. And so it's recognizing what is it that makes me feel comfortable, secure, happy, and how was this going to meet those or not? And therefore, yes, it's disappointing. Yes, it may hurt if this isn't met, but this isn't about me as a person. This isn't about my character. This is just here was the need and it wasn't met in this way. But what, so what is it that, you know, might be another route to getting that filled. And um, one of the things that I want to point out is that it's also, you know, are we looking at these things not as just rejections of us, which they're not, but are they even rejections so much as this other person or party wasn't able to meet our needs? Mm -hmm. And so if they're not, then why would you keep going back to the same well? And so are these things learning opportunities potentially? So the last book that um, I had under contract and wrote uh, while I was still in academia with a co-author and colleague of mine, we actually ended up with the third press who we applied to. And so this goes back to that issue of the writing that you were bringing up and sending out those articles. So we sent proposals 
to one press who we thought it was going to be a good fit. And for different reasons, it didn't fit. And then another one where we thought it was, but the editor who I had worked with had left and a new editor was in who felt like they had a lot of pressure to have some, you know, sort of big hits earlier on. Mm. And we knew ours wasn't going to be that. And even the reviewers said it was going to be a slow burn. It was a really important and powerful idea, but it was going to take a while for people to catch on and understand. Mm. We were really happy with that. That person had their own pressures in their job. But rather than just look at those things as rejections, we looked at what were the reasons people gave us? What were the things which different presses wanted as part of their application? And so rather than throwing that out, we took that on board and, you know, then wrote a really compelling, uh, you know, proposal to the third press we applied to. And it went over like gangbusters. And it's actually a that proposal I've shared with, you know, a couple of grad students, a couple of colleagues, no one who's used that proposal as a model has ever not gotten a book under contract. Right. And if I had looked at the first one or two as, oh, those were rejections. Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's not. Therefore, I guess there's nothing worth saying here. It's okay. It wasn't a good fit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to dance with the people who don't want to dance with me. I don't want to write with for a press which doesn't think this is a good fit for their portfolio. It doesn't make sense. And all of our relationships, business, interpersonal, they're the same because they're not relationships. It's how do we relate to each other? So huge. So huge. And I think that's the the bottom line. You know, we want to relate with people that want to relate to us, right? We want to relate with like a good fit. And if it's not working, then... We find people that, like you're saying, the best one, find people that, that want to dance with you and, and bottom line, you know, make it, make something so much less stressful on yourselves. Find people that want to work with you and relate to you. I love it. I mean, it's a good recipe for life. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of us, and, and I, I'm myself included, I've tried to make relationship work, work, relationships work that just weren't working. Yeah, we weren't relating. And that's that's huge. I mean, it's like, I'm sure if you were trying to dance with someone that you were not relating to, it's a disaster. Absolutely. It can be that, you know, they don't want to dance with me. I don't really want to dance with them. Or it could be our styles just don't line up. I might think this person's a great dancer. They might think I am. But our styles, just how we are hearing this music, how we both want to move to this music, they're just, they're not in sync. And so if we try and force it, it's miserable. And that's not that either one of us is right or wrong. It's just, it doesn't resonate. And so why force it? And I just want to acknowledge, like, I've been there too. I think one of the things that I internalized um, from, you know, growing up with parents who did not get along well, got divorced, it was contentious, was, you know, I sort of got this idea that the worst thing you could do was abandon someone. Well, neither of my parents did that, but that was one of the narratives I heard mm -hmm. rather than that one of them left because that's what was healthy for them. And ultimately, I think was the best move. But my dad left and I think he was right to. But the narrative I heard from my mom was that he abandoned her. And so then I held on to relationships later in life, long after it would have been healthy to hold on to them, but because I'd internalized internalize this idea of I would be abandoning someone. It's like, no, I'm not. This isn't working. And so it's, you know, being willing to look at things as they are and not as we think they should be. And then say, okay, if it's really about this person, like this isn't working for either of us, or maybe their needs are getting met here, but mine aren't. And ultimately I'm going to be resentful if this keeps going. And that's not in their service either. Right. I like, I like looking at everything like that. I like this idea. I'm, I'm, I'm having an aha moment, Jonathan, where I'm like, if I could just put the, the concept of relating to everything in life in terms of my relationships with folks and, and, and getting to know folks, it's not a good fit. It's not a good fit. Same thing with doctor patient. I had kind of mentioned that briefly. And I think for a lot of people, they're seeing doctors that they don't relate to or that the doctor doesn't relate to them. And, and vice versa. And I think that's incredibly 
important to think about. You got to find someone that's going to relate to you for your care, for your interpersonal relation. I mean, all of it. Life is about relating. My goodness. And it took me, how, how old am I? Going to be 46 to figure out <laughs> life is straight up about relating. Here we are. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but no, it's it's good stuff because I think for so many people, stress comes from not relating. And I'm guessing that is kind of the the root of your your work with folks, helping folks relate to themselves, the world, others better. Absolutely. It's, uh, again, my business is steps along the way because I think it's the steps we've taken that get us to where we are. And it's being intentional with those next steps that get us the life that's really meaningful and fulfilling and satisfying to us versus the one that we just sort of get to through inertia. So valuable, so valuable. So you just mentioned steps along the way. So let's tell folks stepsalongtheway.com, right? No, nope, stepsalongtheway.global. No dot global that's right that's right okay give us the rest of the scoop so i don't screw it up because i gotta have you do it <laughs> yeah no so i want to make it even easier um as okay. we've just talked about um i think relating is so important right and i am always open to having a conversation with anyone and so i offer totally complimentary no strings attached free 30 minute chance to just have a chat with anyone and the fastest way to find the link for that is actually just steps to chat.com. Okay. It'll take you straight to the scheduling link on my website. Um, but steps to chat.com take you there, find a 30 minute slot that works for your schedule. And I will be happy to relate to you. Have you relate to me? And uh, again, as you said, the fit is so important. And if you walk away with something valuable from that, fantastic. If I make sense to work with longer term in any way, happy to explore it. If I don't, that's fine too. And I just enjoy actually meeting people and learning from them. And so would just invite anyone who's interested to schedule a chance to chat. All righty. We will make sure that we get that in our podcast notes at drjcarlsond.com. Jonathan, such a great conversation. And my big aha moment today is is like mind blowing. So this is fun for me. And I definitely think we'll have to come back and uh, do some more chats so that maybe I could have a few more aha moments about life here. It would be absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on, Janine. As always. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J K R A U S E nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again.